Hi, welcome to Learn, Grow, Bloom. We've got some neat things that we have out today. We're going to look at worms, and we're going to look at the sizes and the texture, and then we're going to build a worm farm or a worm house. So we're going to, what I've done is I have just went to Walmart and I've grabbed worms, and I'm going to dump this out, and we're going to kind of sort and sift through them. And they're all in a cluster here. I've never had that happen before where they're just all together, and there's one that is really dancing. Look at him go. Oh, that's funny. I've never seen one do that before. But there is a lot of them here. And this one right here, I'm going to lay him out flat in my hand. And I'm going to lay this one out flat in my hand. And look at the difference. One is long and one is short. They're both skinny. Um, they both have dirt on them. One is curling up more so than the other one, but look how it's moving. Worms are so interesting to watch how they, how they move and how they move um, back and forth and stretch and coil out. Um, these are really active worms. Look at them go. And they're fun to observe and watch. But what we're going to do is um, we're going to build this worm farm. But one more thing I want you to think about when you're, when you're working with your child with these worms is have, have children think about something in their house that is as long as a worm. It might be a pencil. It might be a pipe cleaner. It might be a pin. Um, what about a crayon? Is a worm the same length as a crayon? So they're having to think cognitively about what might be the same length, even though those objects aren't even right here. Or they, you might even ask them to go gather something or go gather a few things that are the same length as a worm. So there's all kinds of language here that's, gonna, um, that's going to stimulate your child. You're, you're going to get to see them move, and you're going to get to see them coil. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to build this worm um, house. And what I have is two jars, and one jar is lar larger than the other one. And what I've done is I found a jar that's going to fit inside this one. And this is a really important thing to do because when you place the jar inside of the larger one, it's going to keep the dirt and the worms from going into the middle so that around the outside of the jar you're going to be able to see more activity and how the worms tunnel themselves all up against the jar. So that's the purpose of making sure you have something inside the jar that's going to take up space or volume. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add some more worms and I'm going to put them in here along the side just like that. We'll just drop them in and what I've done too is I've added some food, if you will. So I, I brought some things from home that are kind of like vegetation that you might use in compost or you might throw down the garbage disposal. And one's a piece of broccoli and, and there's also some carrots. So I'm going to put them along the side there and then I'm going to add more worms and put them in. And I'm going to leave their dirt with them because that's something that they're used to already in their own environment. So I'm going to add and keep some of that in there because they'll have the same um, odor that they're used to. And I'll keep going, put them in there. I want to make sure I don't miss any, but the kids would have fun doing this. So all of, all of the dirt from the worms is in there. I'll put this and set this aside. And the next job you're going to have is filling this up the rest of the way with dirt. And what I've done is just brought potting soil. We're going to add more dirt to this. And one thing that might be easy is I've taken a cup and I've just cut out the bottom. And so it's going to work as a funnel. And that might be a new word for a child too, the word funnel, because it's actually going to funnel the dirt inside the cup and it's going to keep the dirt from going outside the jar. So we'll see if that's, that's something that, that will work. I brought a shovel here so that we'll just shovel it in and see if, see if that doesn't work. And it's working pretty well. We'll just keep going. We'll funnel that dirt in there along the side and scrape it off the top. And then I think after this next scoop, I'm going to add just a little bit more nourishment for the worms so that they have something to eat. We'll add some more carrots and broccoli here to the sides. And the next thing you're going to need to think about after your jar is filled is, you know, worms really like dark places. And so with that, you're going to maybe keep in mind um, that if you have some newspaper that you can double up or even black paper that you can put around the jar and tape to it. So if your child is not observing the worm house for a while or maybe it's even overnight after you've gone to bed, you're going to want to cover your worm jar up 
so that it's dark around all the sides. And you're going to want to put it all around the sides so that when you take that paper off the next morning, you'll find there's tunnels that the worms have embedded all through, um, through the jar. The other thing you need to be c considerate of is making sure that there's oxygen inside the jar. You don't want to just put a jar lid on real tightly. You want to make sure that there's air and, and room for them to breathe. So enjoy your worm jar and enjoy observing the worms and the activity that you find in the jar taking place. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Learn, Grow, and Bloom.